500,000 men, women and children have been killed in West Papua by the Indonesian government since 1969. Although West Papua is a close Pacific neighbour, the New Zealand and the Australian government are not doing anything to stop the Indonesian government from carrying out the silent genocide. One politician that has been advocating for the New Zealand government to help West Papua is Green MP Catherine Delahunty. It took me a while to realise uh, what it was and what was going on. Uh, like many people in this country, I was incredibly ignorant, not only about the Pacific, but also about um, West Papua. I remember seeing years ago a documentary of some people escaping across a river and thinking, oh, where's that? Something to do with this place, West Papua. And then when I met, um, started working forestry, I met a West Papuan woman, and that's what changed everything for me, and that's what shocked me so deeply. What are your thoughts on the New Zealand government's actions towards West Papua? The New Zealand government has just continued to fail um, and disappoint me so much. They refuse to acknowledge the territorial issues. They, they keep pretending that Indonesia in 1969 had the right to just take this country and occupy it and, and attack its people. And they will not acknowledge that that's an issue. The only thing they will acknowledge is that there are human rights abuses. And then they, they always act as if that's something out of the control of the Indonesian government. If I've challenged the Prime Minister, which I did quite a few times with John Key, when he was visiting various presidents, I'd say, well, are you, know, you going to raise human rights abuses? And he'd always say, um, oh yes, um, we do, we'll discuss it. And then it's kind of like they have some kind of wimpy little discussion about, oh dear, it's not very good, is it? Meanwhile, people are dying, people are being political prisoners, people are being attacked, their villages are being um, living, basically living under military occupation. Why are the government refusing to acknowledge the genocide of these people? It's about a number of issues including um, history but it's also about trade. I think there's a, an issue around wanting to keep trading with Indonesia and make money. Um, we have some kind of milk factory now I think in Jakarta and of course milk is god to this government. So that's part of the reason but it's also Indonesia is a big player and the West Papuans are voiceless. So our government does not play a constructive role in the Pacific in, in some ways because it acts as if we have the right to ignore the colonisation issues and the violence issues in places across the Pacific, but particularly West Papua where there's a complete cone of silence. It's deeply unethical, the position the government takes. It cannot be said that they don't know what's going on. If every West Papua and in the Highlands take with a phone shows us what's going on, we know what's going on. Despite the media ban, the difficulty of getting journalists in there to tell the true story, despite all of those issues, um, there is no excuse now for our government to say they don't really know what's going on. We all know. Um, the public do not know because no one talks about it, but the government, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, they know exactly what's going on. At Benny Wenders' discussion, you mentioned mainstream media were not interested in talking to him. Why do a lot of mainstream outlets not talk about this issue? A lot of journalists in this country um, are very uninformed um, and they only talk about issues that, are, uh, that have uh, a lot of currency and background that's easily available to them. They, they have indicated to me, some of those at the Gallery of Parliament, that they know about this issue. But uh, there are some shining exceptions. So obviously the Pacific Media Centre, obviously um, Radio New Zealand International, obviously Māori Television, um, some of the Pacific Radio. I did actually get an interview when Benny Wender was here, um, much to my surprise, with um, Radio Live, the Mitch Harris show. And actually a journalist who does their job asks those questions about the dirty secrets, what's not being said. That's the point of having a journalist. And if you don't have them doing that, then you can't talk about your democracy or your freedom of speech in a meaningful way. Because we are free to protest in our country about the cruelty happening in West Papua, what does the Indonesian government think of this since they don't have the power to stop us? They can't stop us protesting outside the embassy. They really don't like it. When we went there with Benny, um, some of them came out which was really interesting, and um, started saying, you are wrong, and handing out propaganda to the students. One of the guys, he started yelling, the people know what's right. So I just got everyone on the other side to chant back to him, the people know what's right. And they are trying very hard to win the propaganda war, uh, but they can't, because there's a growing number of young people, particularly Pacifica, Melanesia, Māori, in the universities, um, who are picking up the issue. They will not silence those people. 
but they definitely attend events, um, take photographs of everybody, try to do some kind of surveillance. That's been going on for as long as I've been involved with the issue that the Indonesian um, embassy has sent people to photograph us um, at various events. There's always somebody in the background and sometimes there are Indonesian students who uh, come to our talks and try and say that they did this in Wellington and try and say that there is um, no problem. Um, there was a young woman who tried to say that at the Wellington talks and after she'd asked quite a few questions of Benny, uh, the Pangata Whenua students got up and did the haka. And they just were like, nah, that's enough. You know, we've had enough. So um, they're there, but, but they're not going to silence the younger generation. That's what gives me hope. What can we as the public do to help? I think that the changes are going to come because of people, because of the public. So what we can do is educate our, each other, inform each other, share information, use social media, participate when we have international guests like Benny. Um, we need to bring everybody on board and then put pressure on the government that this is a political issue. I'm old enough to remember that we can make change and international solidarity can work. So I went through the Springbok tour and saw us resist and stand up against apartheid. I've seen us um, stand up um, on East Timor and all those issues and it's it doesn't have to be everyone in a population to make change there just has to be a vocal and organized minority of people who will not give up if everybody understands the story then they're going to show the same solidarity that Pacific nations are really starting to show towards West Papua